Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. We are focusing on our faith this week, having us think about how is our faith right now and how is it growing? You see, in the Bible, we have so many examples of people of faith. There's chapters exclusively written about it. There's so many stories where we see the faith of men and women growing in their relationship with God. We also see stories where people reject their faith or refuse to have faith and they doubt or they fear or they worry. You know, it's so challenging for us to consider where our faith is at. Are we growing in our faith? Are we trusting God more? Are we leaning and depending on him more? Or are we becoming more independent? Are we thinking we know better? Are we not happy with God when he doesn't do what, he, what we want or when he requires something that we're unwilling to do? You know, these are interesting questions. And so we've been looking to the word of God and really discovering through people's lives how they responded in comparison to how we are responding so that we could be challenged to continue to grow. I want to read a portion of scripture to you today or with you if you have your Bible from Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 18. This is this is entitled, Jesus Speaks to the Rich Young Ruler. And some of you already know this story, but let me read it to you again. This is when Jesus was living and breathing and walking on this earth. It says, once a religious leader asked Jesus this question, good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. And here we see Jesus reciting some of the Ten Commandments, which this young man would have clearly known as a religious leader himself. The man replied, I imagine, with a smile on his face. And he said, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was young, meaning he was raised in it. In verse 22, it says, when Jesus heard his answer, he said, there is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the man heard this, he became very sad for he was very rich. In fact, or when Jesus saw this, he said, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? In fact, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, then who in the world can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for people is impossible with God. I'm going to stop there, actually. You can read on if you want to know what happens next. But I'm going to stop there because the point has already been made. You see, with this young man, he grew up in religion. He had some sort of faith. He had followed these rules from a young boy. He had applied these commandments to his life, but here we find a commandment, a rule, a standard, an expectation from God in that moment. Jesus incarnate saying, give, sacrifice, and follow me. And that standard was too high for this young man. You see, that was like the line in the sand. Hey, God, I'll do this and this and this, but that, that for you, I won't do. And it's an interesting thing. Does your faith have a boundary? Will you follow God down the path until a certain point? And then you're like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to, for example, if you want to take money, I'm not going to tithe. I'm not going to give in the offering. God, you can have all of me, but my money. Or maybe it comes to putting others first, turning the other cheek when someone hurts you, forgiving when someone has offended you. Bible's clear on those things. And sometimes you say, God, I, I'm with you. I trust you. I believe in you. God, I love all the love stuff. God, I love all the, you're there for me. You provide for me the peace, the comfort. Yes, 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 yes. But wait, you want me to forgive him? Huh. Do you know what he did? God, do you want me to forgive her? Them? There's no way. That's my line in the sand. My faith done here. There can't be boundary lines in our faith. Our faith must continue to stretch and grow and push those boundaries back where we become more dependent on God, where we trust him and know him to the point where we trust and know the things we don't understand. Even if we don't get it, we're going to continue to trust, not only if he does it our way. Let's think about some boundary lines in our faith that maybe we've put up, some parameters, some limitations, some guardrail, so to speak, to God. Where we're comfortable doing these things for God, but that, oh, I can, I could, and I won't. Do you have boundaries that your faith, your faith, excuse me, can't grow outside of because they've surrounded it, putting up walls of defense against opening your heart fully to God? Think about those things today. 
Hey, I'm not talking religion. You know, if you are a part of a church and you're like, that's not even in the Bible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good. Read it. You know, don't just blindly believe people. Back it up with the word of God. But if God's word has said it, are you going to do it? If God's word says it, are you going to believe it? If God's word said it, are you going to have faith? Are you an even if I don't get it, I'm going to follow you? Are you an only if, God, you do it this way? Think about that. Pray about that. Talk to God about that today. Hey, I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for another Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth.